Dr. Dusan Jubril, I'm the medical director of South Asia Hospital. Um, hypertension is elevation or increase in the blood pressure. Um, if I'm going to explain it in a layman's term, imagine you put a hose to the tap and then you switch on the tap and then you step on the hose midway. The water cannot pass through that part which you step on, right? And then the pressure starts building along the hose. So basically it's the same thing that kind of happens with hypertension. It's an elevation of the blood pressure and um, this could be due to different reasons. Hypertension is a decrease in the blood pressure. So hyper means increase and hypo means uh, decrease in the blood pressure. I'll go back to my analogy. The body needs blood. The first one, you switched on the tap, right? And then the water, you stepped on the, the hose midway. The water is not passing through. In hypotension, it's like you probably didn't switch on the tap well. So basically, what happens in hypotension is that either the heart is not pumping enough blood around the, the body, and then uh, vital organs like the brain, um, the kidney, um, and the heart itself don't get enough blood and oxygen. Um, hypotension, the onset is sudden and is easily, um, unlike hypertension that can exist for a long time without you noticing. If hypertension occurs, the patient probably will show certain symptoms that will um, let the doctor be aware that probably something is not right. Uh, this will be probably headache, um, dizziness, uh, fainting, um, and that is why hypertension is more dangerous um, or scarier to a lot of people than hypertension. So for hypertension, we can um, categorize it into two sectors. Um, we have essential hypertension, which um, after investigating, you couldn't pin down a cause. Then that is basically essential hypertension. And then it could be secondary hypertension. Um, it could be due to other um, diseases that is provoking um, the elevated um, blood pressure. Um, certain diseases like um, tyrotoxicosis can cause an elevation in the blood pressure. Um, even certain infections are known to cause elevated um, blood pressure. Use of certain um, uh, stimulants um, like, like caffeine, um, would cause your BP to go up. Um, cocaine, um, marijuana, and the other kind of um, uh, recreational drugs tend to push up the, the blood pressure. However, when a doctor sees a patient and rules out all this and is sure that none of it is causing the elevated blood pressure, then that person is probably going through what they call essential hypertension. For um, hypertension, um, it could be induced also by drugs. Um, hypertension is mainly witnessed in patients that are hypertensive, took their antihypertensive medications, 
and then these drugs inadvertently crashed their blood pressure, making them to become hypotensive. Also, hypertension can be seen in certain um, emergency, um, urgent conditions. Um, this could include probably doing an accident, if someone is bleeding heavily from uh, a particular part of the body and then there's loss of bodily fluids, loss of blood, um, the BP tends to crash. That's trauma-induced hypertension. Um, when you're dehydrated, if maybe someone, the person is not feeling fine, um, is throwing up and vomiting, you're losing a lot of bodily fluids, uh, the BP tends to crash at that point also. So it could be an infection-induced um, hypo, um, hypotension, hypovolumia-induced hypotension, if you have sepsis, it could also induce hypertension. However, in healthy people, the main cause of hypertension is when they take certain drugs that suddenly crash the BP. Certain tumors in the brain are also known to cause hypertension as their symptoms. Fruits. When you reach out, you go walk, you go pound, your body go to pay you, even your fingernails go to pay you. But make gonna not worry, make gonna relax. I get good news for now. When I don't hear banga fresh palm fruit extract, all you need to do now make you go for the up, open up. Take the amount where you want, put that for your pot. Push soup you want to make, she never will see. She na bono, she na vegetable, she na banga. Ah uh ah, -uh. my sister no waste time again. My brother no waste time again. Just go buy banga fresh pan fruit extract. They go no say you sabi cook and you be better cook. Banga, come make your food in yum yum. Distributors needed nationwide. Phone number 081 0803564436 Banga Fresh Pan Fruit Extract. So, when you check your when you look at your blood pressure machine, you have what we call the diastolic, I mean the systolic and the diastolic. And these are ranges. Um, the top range is the systolic and it is um, between 140 and 90 millimeter of mercury. That's for the top range. And then the lower range is the diastolic. And that is between 90 and 60 millimeter of mercury. So if you have anything above 140, it means the systolic is high. And if you have anything above 90 for the lower um, range, it means the diastolic is high. Now, for the upper for the um, systolic, if you are, if your systolic is below 90, the systolic is below 90, it means the BP is low. And then the diastolic, if it is below 60, it means the diastolic is low. Now, as I said, BP is a range. Some people, you see them, their blood pressure is 
85 over 55 and they are perfectly okay so for hypotension it's always advisable to understand the patient's general condition the patient's um, stable blood pressure before you start diagnosing hypertension however if you see a blood pressure of below 70 the systolic below 70 and the diastolic below 40 regardless of the condition then that person is hypotensive you need to start acting immediately so however the normal range is for diastolic between 140 and 90 and systolic between 90 and 60. So um, there is a perception that um, hypertension is caused by old age. Um, yes, yeah, so old age is a factor in um, high blood pressure, but I think the bigger factor is genetics. Um, in Nigeria today, we see a lot, majority of our new patients are probably below the age of 40. And I think, um, we have to do away with that perception that um, old age has is one of the major factors in high blood pressure. The mistake we have made with that uh, perception is that most people are not checking their blood pressure earlier on and they are coming down with complications of high blood pressure. Um, genetics is a major factor and as black people um, we are much more prone to high blood pressure than Caucasians and even um, Asians. So I think this plays a major role in um, the, the frequency at which we diagnose people to be hypertensive even at a young age in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, in terms of managing these factors. Once someone is um, known to be hypertensive, there are certain things you probably need to um, investigate in the person. Um, one of the things is you probably want to know if the person has certain habits that makes them um, prone to a complication of hypertension. Does the person smoke? Does the person take recreational drugs? Um, does the person exercise? Um, does the person have familial history of um, certain chronic conditions like diabetes? Um, does the person have a familial history of dyslipidemia? What is the cholesterol level or the cholesterol profile of this person? Um, once you have all these ideas, you probably will be able to adequately manage um, hypertension and uh, prevent any kind of complication in a patient. Most people don't understand the magic of the perfect skin. The allure of the well-pampered skin we bounce from skincare products to skincare products. From spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found the solution. It's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemiviv family. but it is not a chronic disease so um, 
when it comes, you manage it and the patient is discharged. But for high blood pressure, uh, the major coexisting factors will be dyslipidemia, high cholesterol levels, and um, diabetes, which is um, uh, high blood sugar levels. And um, yeah, once you can manage these coexisting factors, as we know, a, a huge chunk of hypertensive patients turn out to be diabetic. And um, once you can pay attention to these conditions and manage them, you are less likely to have um, complications in the future. Um, not particular diets, but um, hypertensive patients, the major advice would be to reduce their salt intake. Also, um, if their cholesterol levels are not well controlled, then they need to probably reduce intake of red meat and uh, fatty, fatty foods. Um, but what we've seen is one of the major factors that determines how successful you're going to be in managing hypertension is salt. And um, if the person eats out, if the person doesn't cook at home, then you, they need to really consider um, changing their eating habits. Um, also, of course, um, vegetables helps a lot. When I mean vegetables, I don't mean um, egusi and uh, afang and co. I mean um, probably cabbage, carrots, and um, vegetable meals that are not oil based. Um, also avoiding red meat and processed meat. When you're talking about processed meat, you, you, you're looking at sausage and things like that. We have to understand that um, they need a lot of salt to help with preserving um, these kind of um, meals. So the most important thing is probably salt and hypertension. If you can reduce your salt intake significantly, you will be able to control your blood pressure.